good morning and welcome to Abundant Love Sunday School panel. Uh, sorry about our tardiness, but we're going to get right into it. I am Deacon Kyle Van. To my left, I have Sister Marilyn, or should I give her an upgrade like she gives me, Evangelist Marilyn. Um, and then over <laughs> here on this side, I have to my right, Minister Wilson, Winston, Winston, get it right. <laughs> so how are you guys this morning? All right, good, good. So today's lesson is coming from Jonah, chapter 3, 1 through 10. Um, we're still working with Jonah and seeing what is going on with Jonah. Yes, 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 yes. Before we get into anything, we are going to pray. Um, Minister Winston, would you pray for us? Father, we thank you for your word this morning, Denny. Father, we thank you, Denny, Father for ears, Denny, Father, to hear what you have to say to us this morning, Denny, Father. Bless this panel, Denny, Father, so that we may dig, Denny, Father, and get the nuggets that you have put out for us, Denny, Father. Denny, Father, bless each and one of our, everyone that has an ear to hear yes, your God. word, Denny, Father. And Lord, we give you praise this morning, Denny, Father, and we thank you, Denny, Father, for your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 All right, like I said, our scripture comes from Jonah chapter 3. One, two, 1 through 10, and I'm going to read 1 through 4, and I'll have you, Sister Marilyn, read the next three, uh, 5 through 7, and you'll finish it up with 8 through 10, if that's okay. So it reads, Jonah chapter 3, verse 1, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go into Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Verse five. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Seven, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Number eight, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Nine, who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? Number 10, and God saw their works that they turned from their evil ways and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them and he did it not. Amen. Amen. So our golden text is... John is Jonah 3 and verse 10, like he just read. God saw their works, and they turned from their evil ways, and God repented of the evil that he said that he would do unto them, and he did not. And when you read that, sometimes we, and I don't want to get too far into the lesson already, but sometimes we look at the word repent, and like God repented, and it wasn't about God did something wrong, and he had to repent. It was that he changed his mind on the things that were going to happen to Nineveh if they didn't do what he asked them to do. And there's plenty of scriptures in the Bible that show God changing his mind, either by someone praying to him, someone doing the right thing, someone changing their mind or their way. So just to clear that up, so as we read it, we know. And we'll probably discuss it a little bit more later if we get to it there. Um, our introduction reads, one of the most encouraging things we learn about God is his word is how willingly he gives a second chance to those who have 
being disobedient. This is one characteristic that sets him apart from the pagan gods of the nations that surrounded Israel. Those gods were often viewed as continuously angry or vindictive. The list of people in the Bible to whom God gave second chances is lengthy. It begins with Adam and Eve, Cain, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph's brothers. Soon we read about Moses, Miriam, and Aaron. Later, God gave second chances to Eli, David, and Manasseh. In the New Testament, God continues to work with Peter, John, Mark, Paul, and others. Each, each life is a study of God's mercy and grace. We fit right in. God has forgiven all who believe in Christ and offer them second chances. God's grace towards Jonah should produce deep gratitude in every heart. And I like that right there. We can have a whole lesson on just that. But our lesson text is, nevertheless, um, three outlines, Jonah's limited time, Nineveh's belief, and God's compassion. So, what did you guys get, or what was the first thing that hit you when you started to read this? You can go ahead. Well, when I read it, you know, um, and studied the lesson, I uh, remember last week's le lesson where God had Jonah to repent. Mm -hmm. And now the, we're in the lesson now where it says Nineveh repent. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 every, everybody in the city repent. And I, I read about how God is so merciful that he'll give you time yeah, yeah. to get it right, you know, before he, as we say, you know, lay it on you, you know. Yeah, yeah. But God is so gracious that he, he don't want no man yes. to die in their sins. Yeah. And I just reading it, it was, as we look at it today, you know, how we, God, give us time, yeah. you know. When we've done something, he'll tell us, and but he'll give you that period of time to get it right. Yeah. The lesson is good. It's gonna be. It's a good lesson. Yes. Very good. Lesson. What do you think? <laughs> well, um, they, they, he had. They had uh, forty days. He gave him a That's right. forty days yeah. grace period. That's right. Yeah. And then he gave them, a, which is, was for the way to escape. That yeah. was their way to escape. Mm -hmm. And what he does for us, all his children, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah. And yet, you know, I like the part of the lesson. I'm not gonna go far into the lesson. It's all right. But it talks about. Us, this, in this day and age, um, how we are quick to uh, not forgive uh, sinners or, or mm -hmm. deliver God's word to sinners. And I thought that was really profound in here. So that's what I got out of the lesson. Oh, yeah. We're going to touch on that. <laughs> and uh, I got it just a, a God of second chances. Um, yeah, just man. looking at it and understanding there's second chances there. Um, and all our related scriptures were so good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. For that, we have uh, just a quick breakdown. Um, Esther 4, 1 through 3 was more expressing um, the value of wearing the sackcloth. Mm -hmm. um, Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10 was um, God expressing how he would destroy the people if they didn't straighten up. Mm -hmm. um, Amos 7, chapter 7, 1 through 6 mm -hmm. was showing God's warning. Uh, through visions, so there's always something that's going to warn you before the destruction. Um, and then we have is that Nahum? Nahum. Nahum. And then Nahum. Um, one, chapter 1, 7 through 14 expresses God is a good God, and he has a plan for his people, mm -hmm. no matter what's going on if they're facing evil. Mm -hmm. And then John 21, 15 through 7 expresses the call an assignment of God for us to do and complete. So it is very good. If you have time to read those, please read those. But no further ado, getting into the lesson. Um, verse 1, if we break it down verse by verse, um, 1 through 4 really gives us a lot of information mm -hmm. um, about what is going on. There are significant things, three days mm -hmm. to get to Nineveh. The number of three to God, uh, you know, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You have those three days. We have 40 days for them to get everything right. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Um, so it's a lot going on in those first four verses here. Mm -hmm. But what was sticking out to me was 
when you read these four chapters, I mean, these four verses there, how long it took from last week, like you said, we know that Jonah got spit up, but we didn't know where Mm -hmm. he got spit up. So then the city is so big, and in the text, it starts to talk about he didn't even really get to, like, quote, unquote, downtown Mm -hmm. of the city to see the king for a whole day's travel. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take them that long because the city was so big. It's kind of like here, like Fort Wayne and New Haven. We don't really look at New Haven sometimes as New Haven. We just like, Mm -hmm. it's Fort Wayne. And it just feels like another part of it. So in those first couple of verses, what did you get out of that? Well, I got out of it when he said the word came, as he uh, said, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. The second time, yes. The second time. Yeah. The first time God gave him uh, the word, he told him to go mm-hmm. and tell the people. You know, and the second time, I mean, the first time, and then Jonah did, of course, you know, yeah. Jonah did what he did and everything. And so after he repented, God put him right back on the same road and told him again for the second, second time. time yeah. You know, and it's amazing how God sometimes will tell us something and we'll do, go and do the things that we think is right. Yeah. And God will come back, and then after we go through all what we come through, God bring us right back and say, I need you to do this. Yeah. And the yep. way I tell you to do it. Exactly. See, we have a tendency of sometimes figuring that we got we got to help God. God don't need our help. No, not at all. He don't need our help. <laughs> when God tell us something, he already know the, the, the ending of it. You yeah. know, he made the tomorrow and everything. So he know yes. what he's doing. What do you think about the importance of that second chance? Well, um, God is the God of second chances. Amen. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, because his grace <laughs> yeah. and mercy is yeah. all sufficient, you know. Um, and then the first two verses, as we were expounding on that, uh, this time Joan obeyed. Yeah. <laughs> Quickly. It is a healthy thing to fear God is what I wrote. Yeah. Um, we talked mm-hmm. about Hebrew 1031 in the lesson. After all, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of of the living God, mm-hmm. Hebrews 10, 31 again. Yeah. And then 10, Matthew 10, 28 says, he said to fear not them which kill the body, but are mm-hmm. not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul <laughs> and body in hell. Yeah. Amen. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the second chance is very important because mm-hmm. if he, if we didn't get that second chance, there would be no point of redemption. Absolutely. Um, and that is exactly what Jesus came down to do. So he's showing us this. I What was really eye-opening to me when I was reading was that this is one of the first times that I think I remember that somebody was told to go talk to somebody other than the Hebrews mm-hmm. about getting right. Mm-hmm. And first. it's the first, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure, it yeah. Was. So that in itself is so big for Jonah and how big that city is when you move to three and four that it shows how big of a responsibility mm-hmm. Jonah had to do that. That's why God needed him mm-hmm. to go there and see those people. Um, Can I say something? Yeah, go so ahead. So in reference to in my, some of my notes in the, about the size of the city and the, just the population, mm-hmm. it says there's approximately 175,000 in that population. Yeah. Um, right now, if you can compare it to a city here, it'd be a yeah. lot larger. Right now, our city's here, but mm-hmm. yeah, just but the size three days, even just to walk from one side of the city to the other, to the other side. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. he was walking and talking, walking and. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. He was just walking and proclaiming. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we read uh, as we read, we start to understand that Jonah had his own personal reasons mm-hmm. not to want to go to Nineveh. Not, <laughs> not at all. Not, not at all. <laughs> so, <Even> that <laughs> not, so it is, um, but it's very good to read because it puts us right here. Some of us don't want to go out Ooh. in the city and talk to somebody that's homeless. Mm-hmm. Somebody doesn't want to go out and talk to somebody that they may not deem to smell good or mm-hmm. look good, or even because that person is not of the same color, race, religion, mm-hmm. and Jonah had a bias against these people because he knew that they were desperately wicked. Yes. The town was wicked. They were skinning people alive. They were putting their heads on poles. They were doing a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. So now he's coming in be ruthless, and he's yeah. being a Hebrew, and you know that was already like, oh, shunned upon to a lot of people that wasn't there because everybody tried to take their stuff. We're going to be mm-hmm. honest, taking their land. So now he's going somewhere where he believes that God should just strike them down. Mm-hmm. In that moment. 
Go ahead. And being, you know, and 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 being a prophet. Yeah. Him being a prophet, <laughs> he didn't like the people. At he all. he at, he really told God, "I'm not going. I want to go. <laughs> you know, I'm not. Go- I, I'm if I pimp. leave, yeah, maybe God." Timing would just go ahead and kill them all out. He said, yeah. I don't even care. Yeah. Yeah. And he took that chance, like uh, Sister Merrill said, it's, it's, it's dangerous to fall in the hands yeah. you know, of the living God. You know, mm-hmm. when he tell you something to do, it's amazing how God has sent us, or like we say, like you said, to go and help somebody. Some people that they re- really, some people they really don't care nothing about saving or about. Nope. It's all about me. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm saved, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm on my way to heaven. I don't yeah. care about her. You know, she, you know, she got an attitude, or he got an attitude, you know. Yeah. And God said, you know, it's nobody I want to be uh, to die and go and die and go, go to, to hell. hell. Yeah. He didn't want nobody, you know. Nobody. And he gives you chances mm-hmm. to After get chances, your life right. Yeah. Yes, chance you know? chance. I think chance. that. Um, because he, he was, even though he initially didn't want to do it, he mm-hmm. still didn't want to do That's it. Right. Even though he got spit back on the land by the big fish, mm-hmm. he still didn't want to do it. <laughs> but then when he got on his way and he was walking and proclaiming God's word <laughs> the first day even, you know, but I think deep down he was glad that he can tell them people, ha, 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 if y'all don't get it right, y'all finna die in 40 days. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it is hard, it, you know. It doesn't tell us that, but it you kind of get it, you that. You I'm get saying? that through the reading and you understanding yes. how he was operating in that time. And it's so good for us to hear that because mm-hmm. there's going to be times when God tells us to go talk to somebody that we may have an ought with, a disagreement mm-hmm. with, and we have to look over that because his will is greater than our will. And if we submit to that, that's what happens. So Jonah immediately, like you said, the second time he was like, yeah, I'm going. Yeah, yeah, ain't no, yeah. I, I just no got about this belly. <laughs> yeah, I just got the belly of this fish. <laughs> yes. I'm yeah. going. Yeah. You ever yeah. realize when you was younger when your your mother or father tell you something to do and you didn't was, do it yeah. and they start disciplining you and then you say, okay, 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 <laughs> I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> yes. you know, I, I look at that as Jonah when when God put it on him. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, you know hey, 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 I'm going, I'm yeah. going because three days in a dark place <laughs> in a well, not a whale, but a fish. <laughs> yeah. Three days by yourself, seaweeds mm-hmm. on your head. How much? How many? How worse can you get? Yeah, you yeah. know. It's time to you know. He looked up, Lord. However, and I, I sat here and I think about how gracious God is. You oh, know? Yeah. How yes. even though when you down in the lowest pit, yeah, He can still reach down, pick you up, mm-hmm. clean you off, like you said, and put him on the shore and say, "Now go." This is what mm-hmm. we gotta do. Yeah. So moving into the next couple of scriptures, um, looking at six through eight. Mm. <laughs> this is, I love this part of it. No, six, the word of God. <laughs> for, the, uh, for word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered himself in sackcloth and set in ashes. Now, these are people that didn't know anything about about, none of that. about Yahweh. Yeah, they knew yeah, about yeah. the other gods yeah, that they were they putting up. The but they had the nothing idols. to know about mm-hmm. the highest of the high. Pagan. And it, definitely pagan. And they were doing things the pagan way. They were skinning people, like I said. They were putting people's heads on stakes. They were just they were just doing whatever they thought mm-hmm. was supposed to be there. And you get a man that came out of a fish's belly, but they didn't know that. <laughs> but he comes out of a fish's belly, comes there and tells you the word. And these are pagans, people that never believed it. It's like uh-huh. you going outside and the first person you see is an atheist and you tell them, hey, you got 40 days to get right or God <laughs> going to come. And they instantly throw off their clothes. One day. One day. The first time the they heard first it. Day. They instantly throw off their clothes and he puts on sackcloth. He starts to... To put the whole city in this, and I don't want to go too far because I want you guys mm-hmm. to talk about it too. But that whole scene and recognition to me from the king was kind of mind blowing for pagans. Mm-hmm. What did you feel about that? Well, first I said, you know, sometimes it takes us people. We hear the word for years and years yeah. and years, and we still don't believe and we don't receive, uh, even after hearing and knowing that judgment day is soon to come. But these people, even after that one day, then as I was reading, I was reading about the sackcloth. Uh, They they believed fast and they put on sackcloth. I said, sackcloth? 
Because somebody said something to me like that one time. I said, they, you can put on some sackcloth. And somebody looked at you. I said, what? Some sackcloth? Mm -hmm. But then I read what sackcloth feel like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very coarse and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> but that's a sacrifice. A sackcloth was put as a sign of mourning, grief, repentance, yeah. or submission. Um, and then the most profound thing I was reading that the king laid his robe down, put on his sackcloth, and he sat in ashes. I was reading a description, and it said that generally in the Old Testament, people put on the sackcloth yes. as a resemblance yeah. of submission, but they usually sprinkle the head with ashes. Yes. The king, I don't sprinkle for me. He <laughs> sat. He, <laughs> he sat in some ashes, a lot of ashes. The sprinkle wasn't right. enough. <laughs> yes. So, I, uh, when I... When <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought about it and I read it, and it's amazing how God, if you don't listen, God has somebody that he can talk to that mm -hmm. will listen. These are pagan people. Yeah. Yeah. These people didn't know nothing. They didn't care nothing care and everything, nothing. but the minute I look at when Jonah asked for repentance, mm -hmm. when Jonah asked for repentance when he's in the well, yeah. and he actually truly turned Except from what he was doing, yeah. and he went and done what God said, mm -hmm. the power that was with him, yeah. the power that was with him, when he went and said, okay, I'm going I'm to I'm let, God told me to tell you in 40 days, <laughs> he's going to destroy this place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the king, now he's the head. Mm -hmm. he, he, he had to feel it. I mean, if you're going to lay your royal robe down as a pagan mm -hmm. person and Listen to a prophet yeah. that they didn't care none about prophets. They didn't care mm -hmm. none about mm -hmm. nobody mm -hmm. about God. But he listened, and then not only that, he made everybody and the animals and the animals. He put sackcloth on the, the goats <laughs> and the donkeys and they everything. Say you can't eat or drink. Nobody nothing. Eat. I'm gonna make sure this right. <laughs> <laughs> so. I've, that getting that all right at that moment and understanding that yeah. everybody, like the king, heard the word, he instantly moved, yes. and that should give us the yes. the gusto to say, yes. if yeah. I know, because Jonah should have did it in the, in first, the first place, because he already knew who God was. Mm -hmm. These people don't know who God is, and Jonah didn't come up and say, "Hey, the God of everything is telling me." He just said, "Hey, y'all got forty days," <laughs> and that's no very important. He didn't give no explanation yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. That was very important. And then they recognized who he was and said, "Oh, yo, God, oh yeah, we got to yeah. get it right." Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there must have been some stories that they heard about God. Yeah. That's coming in off of Jonah to tell them, hey, God said y'all got 40 days to get it right. As soon as they heard it, it, it didn't take 40 days. He said, everybody going to do this right now. And that's what we need to do. And sometimes I think with our discipleship, when we go out and talk to people, we try to give them so much knowledge at one time. And this is yes. why you should do it. And this is going on. And sometimes this information overloads to some people. Mm -hmm. Those pagan people didn't want to hear all that. Mm -hmm. They just needed to know that we were, are we going to be destroyed? Oh, no, yeah, we can't be destroyed. All, that's all they this heard. This city to be, yep, yeah. okay, this a is what we got to do. Yeah, exactly. a catastrophic uh, event is going to happen to us. Yeah, we, we got to get it right. We can't get mm -hmm. it right. We can't be destroyed like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that gives us another insight of how we should be going out and oh, talking yes. to people mm -hmm. and letting them know. It's good to talk to everybody inside these four walls. And that's fine because everybody coming here kind of knows what Jesus is about. But we get somebody new in here and we come up to them and we read and every this is the book you start from the beginning and go to the that might be too much for them. And we have to hear God, listen to what he says, and then give them the message like he gave it to us. Mm -hmm. they, they, would, they used to say that the church is a gas station where you come and fill up. Yeah. But you do not stay because if you notice by the gas station, yeah. you fill up and you leave. You yeah, right. yeah. And the word is the, the our job as Christian is to spread the word. Mm -hmm. Now, it's good to spread the word among us, yeah. the saved ones. But the unsaved, the Bible speaks that God said, go and uh, uh, compel them mm -hmm. to come in. Go down in the highway and the byways and everything. We have a, enough sinners out there that we can go and witness to yeah. and talk to yeah. and let them know that, you know, and I, I, I used to think about how, like crackheads, you know, God will save a crackhead, yeah. mm -hmm. clean them up, mm -hmm. and send them right back yeah. to where the crackheads are at. Yeah. And then when they look at, because you know how some people say, man, I, 
I can't believe you changed all of your things. Mm-hmm. We used to do it. Blah, blah. Yeah. But see, when they see a change in you, mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. say, well, if God can save him, he can save he can me. Save you know? Yeah, that's yeah. right. And that's about, and we look at it, and we always go back to heart posture. It's about right. your heart right. posture that's once right. you Absolutely. get there. Mm-hmm. And Jonah was mixed up because yeah. he had some biases about these yeah. people. He wanted these people to be gone for what they did and the evilness <laughs> that they did. But that just shows the grace of God right. because he's given them 40 days to get it right. Mm-hmm. And now it's going to take you three days to walk through there. And he probably was a little slowful <laughs> because yeah. I, 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 my mind, that's what Kyle yeah. thinks. I'm not saying that's in the book. But he probably was a little slowful to get there because he, even though he He's knew dreading. he had to do yeah. it, he was like, I don't like these people. Mm-hmm. So he was a little, probably a little slowful to get there, but he did it. But that word, that 40 day grace period. Yeah. It's like when your parents say, hey, when I get back, I need this house <laughs> to be clean. And if it's not you clean, you know, hours. you know, and that they, God was saying, hey, I have so much grace for them. I'm going to give them a month and almost a half mm-hmm. to get everything together. Yeah. And I need you to go right now and get it and tell them this. And after you tell them this, then they don't really explain it in our text or as we uh, in the Bible when we read it in that chapter what was going on in between that time yes how long yeah. they really fasted and repented we don't mm-hmm. get to see that but we do understand that they did it the city was saved for a little while mm-hmm. while jonah was there but yes. as we read further we know that doesn't happen but i don't know if that's next week's lesson so i'm not going to touch on that um <laughs> for real so <laughs> the, the importance of jonah being there, doing what he needed to do, getting people that don't understand or know God to do something should all be an inspiration to us as we read this to go forward. Right. Um, and the lesson is talks about how Jonah never could have imagined just yeah. because he didn't want to do it. Yeah. He still could not imagine the response uh, the sweeping response it says to what he what he was ministering exactly. to the people. Um, so had he did it earlier, you know, God's timing is it's phenomenal. Yeah. God's timing is what it is. God already knows uh, what we're getting ready to do. He knows our heart because he sees the heart. Yeah, <laughs> he, I'm say. sorry. Yeah. He knows yeah. our heart. He sees that where man does not. And uh, so he knows that we're not perfect beings, but we yeah. strive to be perfect. He was a, Jonah was a prophet. Yeah. And he knew his heart. <laughs> he, just, yep. he just needed a on his hand to get him straight. And and he lined up with the word uh, at that point, at that time, because we are, if you say you don't want to go further than the no, the ahead, no, no not to the lesson, to the next one. Oh, your next yeah, one. Yeah, they talk <laughs> about Jonah. Jonah's a, a prophet. A prophet. <laughs> but anyway, um, mm-hmm. with all the, 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 uh, the strategic things that happened, how even the king um, made his proclaim, no, Put the proclaim proclamation out for his people to do what they what he wanted them to do according to the word. They fasted. Yeah. It's hard for us to fast for twenty one days. Yeah. God did it for forty days. He fasted, and for us stop eating and can't eat this, can't eat that. You you can hear the sign over this, the congregation. What pastor do it the first of the year? Yeah. One day fast, <laughs> and, he, and then he passed me like. So what, what's wrong with y'all? Why y'all faces look like that? Yeah. This is not anything new to not us. At all. But see, right. every year. but that's what you, yeah, every year. So Bunch you know it's coming. Prepare yourself. Prepare your heart there it to is. do it. You know, what do you want I, out of that? You know, what do you want to receive? So yeah. I look at it when the pastor do talk to us about fast. When I was, I, let me go back to sackcloth. When I thought about the sackcloth, you know, sack. If Back in the day when they used to put potatoes, yeah, oh, yeah. Just put potatoes about. in them Ooh. big old sacks. Yeah. Yeah. And they had these little holes in them. Holes, just, but they was real itchy, itchy. and they yeah. had to scratch. Now, when you put on a sackcloth, <laughs> I mean, you ain't comfortable. Mm-mm. It's you're constant. not comfortable with it. Then plus you're sitting in ashes. Mm-hmm. Now, I remember when I was a kid, we used to have to clean the furnace out. Mm-hmm. Oh. You know, we had a pot belly sh- a furnace. And every time it got to a point where it got full, we used to have to take mm-hmm. a, a, shovel. a shovel and dig mm-hmm. it all out, yeah. and all this stuff Everywhere. would fly around. Yep. They called it soot. Yeah, mm-hmm. would fly around and everything. So to sit in that yeah. with a sackcloth on, mm-hmm. you oh, yeah. 
It's double irritating. Your skin is irritating. <laughs> that, that ash is not coming off anywhere yeah. quickly. The yeah. more you rub it, the more it's inside. It's so right, yeah, It is an uncomfortable state, but it is a sacrifice of showing God that you're okay being uncomfortable right. mm-hmm. because you're doing his yes. will. Mm-hmm. Um, we're finishing up now. Yeah. Anything we didn't touch on that you want to touch on? I want to say, I want to say is that when God sent you, when God sent you to do something, mm-hmm. you know, don't make it hard on yourself because the first time, if you go through it the first time, you're done with it. Yeah. But if you go through it the second time, you got to have to tap you again. It's just like a parent coming through, telling their child, I have talked to you about this over and over. Yeah. So you might not like the consequences <laughs> True. that's coming. <laughs> so, yes, uh, none of us repent. That means the whole city came together. Whole city came together. And that's what God wants us to do. Even the whole church needs to come together mm-hmm. in one accord. Mm-hmm. I am... Um, I want to talk about what you, I want to really quick, what you talked about earlier when we mm-hmm. first started the lesson, when we talked about the word repent. You wanted to make sure you got the clarification that God yeah. didn't, because God don't have to repent. Not at all. He don't have to do anything. Not at so all. I looked up the word uh, re- repent in that aspect, and it was relent, which means to abandon or mitigate or harsh intention or cruel mm-hmm. treatment. Mm-hmm. We know the city was facing the pending doom, so God yeah. just, he can change his mind. Yeah. said, so did he change his mind? Oh, he can do that. No, yeah. but when he actually changed his mind, he also went back and repented for the things he said he would do to that city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm going to read some scriptures real quick and then we'll be done. So Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Mm-hmm. But 2 Peter 3.9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, yeah. as some um, men count slackless, but is long-suffering to up or usward, not willing that any should perish, but mm-hmm. that all should come to repentance and that's also every one of us even though we have salvation and we know who God is it is um, God created us to praise and worship him but also to go out into the highways and hedges and compel people and talk to them those that are stinky yeah. those that are not in, in, in the word those are homeless but we are supposed to do those we come in contact with in stores we are supposed to deliver the word of God to them if not just nothing else but a smile but we need to let them know who God is that's our light to shine not just in these four walls as a building. Yeah. Yeah, I would say um, that this inside of this lesson, God always provides an escape before you get his raft. Yes. Always provides you an escape. He gave them 40 days before he was going to do something. And we look at Solomon and Gomorrah, he Mm. gave them time, and we have people... (laughs) <laughs> bargaining with God mm-hmm. and for Sodom and Gomorrah to yeah. save them. So there's always a time that God gives you to repent, and that's the grace period. Mm-hmm. We try to say that with work. We got a five-minute grace period if I'm late, so I yes. won't count. Yeah. So <laughs> God gives you a grace period and a warning before his wrath comes. Yeah. Thank you all for tuning in for the Sunday School panel today. I hope something was said that has touched your heart change your mind, makes you peek a question and open up that good book. Um, And that is it for us. Thank you.